And good morning and welcome to Women's Empowerment. And this is just not for women's on today. This is also for it's also uh, for men as well. And um, of course, you can be able to um, um, share this with um, anyone that you um, desire to. Um, good morning to everyone. My name is Diane Winbush, and I'm the pastor of St. Petersburg Global Ministries. And we're thankful that you tuned in with us on today. And so um, we have a series that we will be teaching for the next three uh, uh, for the next three uh, weeks, starting today, so, and it's um, a, a marriage uh, series, and it's in regards to um, what's in it for you. Simple question: What's in it for you? A lot of times, uh, relationships are are started and developed uh, through looks. It's developed through people's eyes, you know, lust of the eyes. Sometimes we have other additional motives that uh, will cause us to get uh, wedded to someone, maybe because of their financial support or financial financial status or because who they are uh, connected to in a uh, family um, relationship. But you have to know what's in it for you, Okay. So we're going to go with the first, um, we're coming from the first Corinthians chapter um, 7 in the King James Version Bible, and we're also going to be uh, praying before we get started, um, and we of course always want to be in prayer for things that are going on around our nation, um, that's what um, Christians uh, should be doing at all times, uh, Christians are supposed to be at the front line of things um, just like God had set up Moses, um, Abraham, other great leaders such as Joseph. He was a governor, so that means he dealt with politics. So did uh, Daniel. And um, we have to be um, ready and ready to go. Don't always look for someone else to be able to always stand on the front line and do the work for others. There is plenty of work in the kingdom for us to be doing, and so we have to be in prayer for all of the things that are going on. These things should not be a surprise to the people of God because we already know that it's in the Word. For those who read the Word, he said these are the beginning of the what times of trouble. And so um, in regards to rioting and all of the things like that, we have to be in prayer, people of God, simply because of the fact that um, people are doing things that are injustice. They are doing things that are not fair to certain um, people due to their demographics of where they live, due to their skin color, due to their jobs, due to their habits that they may have. People are being oppressed. It's like we're back in the days of Pharaoh where he oppressed the children of Israel. Come on here. So we have to be in prayer. It's not about the four corners of the church, but we have to be in prayer for on the highways, the hedges, the byways. We have to be in prayer for other people. Other people are suffering. They're going through in prisons and nursing homes and hospitals. Hospitals. Come on here. We have to be in prayer for these individuals. And I'm talking about meaning it with a good heart. We have to have a heart for God's people. It's not about us, y'all. It's not about us. We have to be in prayer for other people because that's when God can be able to come in and see about you from the things that you have already set up and put up on the wall for other people. So we're going to go in prayer right quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for things, God, being all well with our spirit. Thank you for always giving us a fresh anointing, God, um, every day that uh, your people wake up, Father. We thank you, Lord, for counting it a blessing. Now, we thank you for this word that you're about to impart, Father, upon your people right now in regards to relationships and marriages. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and this is coming out of the King James Virgin Bible. So it says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man 
not to touch a woman. And so now what that means, that just does not mean for him not to put his hands on her, but it means for him not to uh, have uh, intimacy, intimate relationships uh, with a woman. You know, you have to be discreet in some things, and all of us have missed it. We all have missed it. I know I, you know, didn't follow this. I grew up in the church uh, years ago as a child, probably at the age of five or something like that, uh, you know, and when we get grown, sometimes we have our own mind concept as to what we want to do after we get out from under our parents' roof, and sometimes we still be up under our parents' roof, and still we make poor decisions. So, you know, had we would have known this and been saved, uh, you know, years ago, we would have been able to follow this plan out to a T. But these are for the ones that are listening that now, you, since you've don't know better, now you know better for the ones that are single. This is talking to the singles. This is not talking to the people that are married. This here is talking to those that are single. It is not good for a man to touch a woman. Verse 2 says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And so, um, you know, we don't, uh, you know, go out there and be looking at other things and other people. We have to go in there and we have to talk to God, ask God to reframe our flesh. I know sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to look and peep at something else and say, ooh, he got it all together and he smelled good or look at her, her hair is so pretty and stuff. My wife don't look like that, but you are in the wrong area when you want to compare your spouse with somebody else. If you feel that he has a shortcoming or you she, you feel that your husband has a shortcoming, go in there and help him out. If you figure, figure that his hair ain't the way it's supposed to be, go on and get him an S-curl. If you figure that uh, her, her nails ain't the way it's supposed to be, take her to another nail shop. Don't cut down what you have in your home for something else because some things that look good, that don't mean it's always good for you, okay? It says, verse 3 says, and this verse, verse 1, now watch this now. Verse 1 is talking about the single. Verse 2 is talking about the married couple. Watch this. Verse 3 keeps talking, continues to talk about the marriage. It said, let, let the husband render unto his wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So now due bele- do benevolence, that means give her respect. So now you're not going to sit there and go to work on Sunday morning or go to church on Sunday morning, or you're going to get up and go get the newspaper out out your yard and things like that because this, uh, this uh, platform here is just not for for um, Christian people is to help anybody that wants to listen and grab the nuggets, okay? We, 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 I don't do ministry like that. God has not given me a selfish ministry where it's just for church people and people that's on the four, in the four corners of the walls. This is for anyone that desires to click on this link or click on this broadcast or join this broadcast and be willing to listen. And I thank you so much for your support, being willing to listen to God. Amen. I'm telling you, thank you in, on, on his behalf because I know he He's happy and, and grateful that you're listening and tuning in. So, um, so it says, let the husband render unto, verse 3 says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So we give our own individuals respect. And first of all, when you get up in the morning, the first person you need to first be referencing is who? God, because that's your first husband. And then you tell him, good morning. You know, you tell God. I'm talking about for the wives now. Tell your, tell your, tell God good morning. And then you tell your husband good morning if he's awake or what have you and stuff. Whoever gets up and go to work and if he doesn't have a job, you pray to God, give him a job. And that's another thing, you know, when it comes down to reverencing each other. It does not matter who's the breadwinner in the house. You give each other respect because you don't know how the table may turn one day and you may be on the bottom and he may be on the top or you may be on the bottom and God may put her on the top of you where she may be coming in bringing in the loaves loaves and and slicing the bacon and what have you. So we give each other respect, okay? We respect each other in the rightful places. You don't get up in the morning speaking to other folk on your job and you have not even told your wife Good morning. You don't get up and get a, go to the to the to the mailbox and tell your neighbor good morning. You have not even said anything to your husband. You have not given him even a cold drink or even a cup of water or say, look, you know, I just wanted to give you this warm towel so you can wash your face. Give your household respect. This is coming from the throne of God. God loves it when we respect each other first. Come on here. 
give it to each other first. It says the wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also, the husband has not power of his own body, but his wife. So that means they belong to each other. Amen? They belong to each other. The husband ain't got no business out there touching nobody else, and the wife ain't got no business touching nobody else, and the wife ain't got no business going in there complaining to her husband because that's where she signed up as a package when she married her husband. Now, some days it will be where the wife may be tired and the husband should be able to understand. She's tired. She may not want to do anything today, mate, or she may not want to watch a movie or something like that, you give that wife room and respect, and vice versa. The wife do the same thing. But if every day you coming in and you dragging in and things like that, telling your husband that you tired and you tired and you tired, your body belongs to God. It, and then it also belongs to God to miss your body. Mm, thank you, God. Thereby she over to your husband. That's who it belongs to. I mean, you know, I've seen, and which I'm not talking about anybody, but I, I, I you know, witness relationships where they have um they have uh went into uh, divorces because the wife complained so much, you know, she was tired every day and things. And then, too, look, you got a mouth. Get in there and tell God, look, I don't want to mess my marriage up. I want to go in there and I want to talk to you about this and stuff so you can be able to ease up these hours on my job so I can be a satisfaction to my husband or be a satisfaction to my wife. Amen. There's more than one way to skin a cat. You can go around that. You don't have to sit there and always make up excuses just because you are having issues on the job or you may be sick in your body. You know, we being be ill. Nobody don't want to be bothered when they ain't feeling well, you know, especially women. Women go through a lot of challenges in their bodies, and a lot of times they don't want to be bothered. But if she got a real husband at home, he's going to understand that. Now, if you sit there two or three weeks and four weeks down the line or something like that and stuff, and you still running your mouth and complaining and things like that, something ain't right. You ain't trying to be submissive to your husband, okay? So verse 5 says, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and praying, and come together again, that Satan attempt you not for your incontentancy. I don't know why I don't got old and stuff in my words are getting tied. Incontentancy. Whatever. <laughs> so when you're fasting, when we are fasting, we're supposed to let each other know, amen, just like the children of Israel. You know, sometimes when people are in authority like pastors, preachers, bishops, apostles, whatever titles that a person may have, when they are in authority, you have people that will try to buck up against leadership and authority, just like Miriam did her brother Moses. And so, you know, they was went in there and told Moses and things, hey, you talking to God and stuff, you're always going up there to the mountain all the time, you're always having an experience with God, I want to be able to hear from him myself. So God went in there and instructed Moses, okay, then since they want to come in here and talk to me and things and they think that they can be able to handle this, go in there and tell them to bathe themselves, wash themselves, and refrain from laying with their wives and refraining from laying with their husbands the night before so they can be clean. Amen? And so there are certain things that God has in regards to how we um, um, are, are we relaying ourselves to him. We just can't come up to God any kind of way and approach him any kind of way. Amen? God has to have cleanliness. He has to have structure, order. So with that being said, even after they had went up the next day, when he began to talk and speak to the children of Israel, the power was so strong that it sounded just like a trumpet, and it just it, it was it was just so um, igniting and so powerful that they could not even handle it. They even went back in there and told Moses, said, "Look, we don't want him to talk to us." You go in there and let him and, and, and let him speak to you, and you come back and give it to us. See, because they was in the wrong arena. You will have people, they think they know everything. You know, I wish if I was a pastor, I wouldn't have did it this way. If I was a pastor, I would have, you wouldn't have did it no kind of way. You don't know how it's supposed to go because God did not call you. So sometimes it's best to just uh, um, 
you know, hold your comments and your opinions to yourself. So defraud ye not one another. So this is what God is saying in a relationship. They're still talking about the married couple, that when you are in a relationship that you're supposed to talk to each other, you know, I'm going to go on this fast, and when we go on the fast, God don't want nothing to touch it. He don't want nothing to touch that wife. He don't want nothing to touch that husband. It's not saying that she's supposed to fast just because her husband is fasting because we don't know what the, what the husband is getting before God about. We don't know that. Okay? Verse 6 said, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Okay? But I speak this by permission, not of commandment. So what that means is um, there are scriptures in the Bible and some of them are spoken by God. Some of them are spoken by man. Some of the advice are, is given by God through man. And some men use their own wisdom, just like the book of Proverbs, just like the book of um, um, even though Song of Solomon talks about the marriage and things like that when Solomon was, um, 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 you know, married to Bathsheba and things like that, but he is also referring their wedding vows and their marriage uh, to the children of Israel and to us as well. It, it was like a metaphor. And so um, that's the reason why it's just good for us to just stay in the Word so we can learn. Even though a person may come up and they may say, oh, I got this degree. I done graduated with the doctrine of divinity you still can take one verse out of the book, out of, out of a chapter, and it has millions and millions of meaning down the road, 50, 100 years, two, 3,000 years from now, because God's word is ever changed. It, and it may not change in regards to what it's saying, but it will change to be able to fit whatever it is that you're going through. That's what I'm trying to say. Verse 7 says, For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man have his proper gift of God. So it says, one after this manner and another after that. Verse 8 says, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. So um, this is uh, the Apostle Paul talking to uh, the people. He was actually given, a, a, I guess, a little marriage counseling or marriage seminar or marriage um, um, uh, conference or something like that back then. Verse 8 says, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it's good for them if they abide even as I. And it uh, says, but if they cannot contain that the marry, for it's better to marry than to burn. So that's verse 9. So you know, of course, all of those years, we always think that if it's better to, better to marry, better to burn. We thought they were talking about hell. That's not what that is talking about. Better to marry than to burn. That's to burn with passion in your flesh. That's what that's talking about, because if we burn with passion in our flesh, it's the same thing, just like we having the, uh, uh, the original thing that's going on. If we have desires for, any, uh, for a person and we let those desires linger on too, mind, too long into our mind, then it turns into sin, okay? And so we don't want to, you know, it, it, it don't supposed to burn we don't suppose to allow things to burn in our flesh. And then, too, even if you may see something that you like and then you say, ooh, I like that, and you go home and you go to, you know, look in, you know, you go to desiring the, the certain thing in your mindset and things, it's best to go in and take that thing and put it immediately into captivity and bring it under the wheel and subjection of God so God can help you through that. See, a lot of times we can be in positions, we can have titles and stuff, but we're the last person to go in there and work on ourselves. We work on everybody else. We take a brick, we take a hammer, we take a backhoe, we take a chisel, we take a hacksaw, and we cut up everybody else. But we as leaders, we never take the opportunity to see if we're undone, if we're unfixed. Because if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, now, watch this now. If we, I didn't say nothing about no speaking in tongues. I said if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, if we feel with the Holy Spirit, the first person that God is going to get a hold to of is us. I remember fasting some years ago, and it was something that I had saw, and it was in regards to my own relationship and things, and this, I don't know, 2003 or something like that. And, boy, I went in there, I tell you what, I'm going to fast on you. And when I went in there and fasted, the first person that came up in the fast was me. 
I, God brought me up under a full conviction. Forget about what it what it was that I was. I had forgot about the whole thing about what I was trying to tell God in the past about my own spouse. God went in and brought me under arrest. Okay, and so that's the reason why we don't go in there. If that, that's how you can tell when a person is saved. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. It's more to, to an individual being in the pulpit, standing up there with the microphone, knowing the scriptures. The devil knows the scriptures. He knows how to stand up in the pulpit. He knows how to do all of these things because Jesus Christ told it right there in the Word of God in the New Testament that I beheld Satan falling from heaven like what? Lightning. That means he knows how to transform himself. He can train him. She, he can transform himself. Come on out of her. He can transform himself. So it's not important. See, a lot of people all the time we sit around here thinking it's important, all these titles and stuff. It's not about that. And then your household is wrecked. It's tore up. Amen. That's the reason why, look, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this again. I don't mean no harm and stuff. That's the reason why I don't get out in the public and stuff trying to brag and all that kind of stuff about, you know, I, you know, I love my wife. I love my, I don't get into any of that, that, that kind of stuff because I know that relationships, as long as we're on this side of the earth, we're still going to have challenges in our relationships. We're going to have disagreements in our relationships. If you got everything together, then you better watch yourself, okay? We're going to have disagreements because we both come from back different backgrounds. You and your spouse come from different backgrounds, and you may see things in one way. And then and the other, uh, uh, your partner may see th- uh, uh, different opinions in a different way. So we don't sit there and behave like that, get up and put all these stars on people and stuff like that in front of individuals I just love and stuff. Uh-uh. When I hear people do stuff like that, I, all, I kind of figure it's a problem that's going on in order for that man or if she's a female pastor and things, if she's always up there putting stars and roses on her husband in front of everybody else, just something just ain't right because I feel that if whatever is good at home, that it's gonna, people are going to be able to see it on the inside, that you don't have to say nothing. Nothing at all. Mm. You don't have to say anything, okay? You can acknowledge your spouse and stuff like that. You know, I would thank God for my wife and stuff, you know, for people to give her a hand clap. You don't want to look over the woman of God. That would be wrong in the house of God. But I'm talking about all this excessive boasting and all of this excessive bragging and all this excessive this and all this excessive that. And I'm going to do this and stuff like that. And then when they go to the house and stuff and the wig is pulled off, the nails are taken off, all of these other things are taken off and things. And then that's when they use it for the children to get in there and get on Facebook and stuff and tell what's going on in their own parents' household. Come on out of here. So it's just best to just go in there and just flow according to the will of God and just move on and move forward. Because sometimes some first lady don't like to be put on the spot. Some of them don't. Some of them don't like you to call their name out and stuff. So you have to be careful and stuff. Respect people in their in they rightful positions and things. Just like uh, even though it, it, it was not so much as wrong as to what Vashti done in the book of, um, in the book of Esther, what it was is that God needed to move Esther out the way in order to save the Jews, okay? So the issue with Esther was the reason why she disobeyed her husband because her husband was drunk. Uh, 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 Ahasuerus, King Ahasuerus. He was drunk, and so she didn't want Ahasuerus pulling her out in front of all of those people, putting her on the spot like that and stuff for them to look at his, look at her and her beauty and stuff like that while he was sitting up there. You know, he was intoxicated. Okay, and so it was wrong, and so that's the reason why those elders, he went in there and got wise counsel from his platform, and they went in there and they told him and stuff. So no, said, you're going to have to get rid of her, so because if you don't and you don't put her out, so they're going in there they're going to start to mistreating us and stuff. Our wives are going to take up from what she's doing and stuff, and they're going to start treating us like that. So you want to get up out of here. She's going to have to go. She already got her coat, wears her hat. They have to get up out of there. And so God allowed it simply because of the fact that he needed to do something through Esther, and that would save the Jews, okay? So we respect one another. It says, but if they cannot bear it, let them, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. And look, I'm going to say this. If you've got children and they, they, they have children out of wedlock, don't knock them down. Don't kill them. Don't beat them and stuff like that. Don't, don't, don't knock them and stuff, you know, for trying to throw them on the altar, put oil all on people and stuff, speaking in tongue all around them. Don't do them like that. See, some of the stuff that the old pioneer saints used to do, 
Some of it was good. They meant well and stuff, but it didn't take that for us to get to heaven. It did not take that for, for people to be able to be saved. It not, did not take that for us to be able to stand before the, the presence of God and before his throne. Sometimes we be adding stuff in there, y'all. Sometimes we be adding stuff. Maybe we try to make it hard for people to get to heaven. We try to make it look like God is just really just dogmatic and things, and God will pull his wrath out now. But, you know, you, we follow the scripture, follow what the spirit of God said. Amen? Follow what the word said. And then don't try to beat them down and things because if you keep living, it's going to be some things that's going to come up with your children, your nephews, your aunties, your pookie, your Ray Ray, your Billy Bob, all of them going to come up and stuff where they're going to do some things that even though you raised them and we raised them and we trained them right, they're still going to go off a little bit. You know why? Because we did it. We ain't been saved all our lives and stuff like that. You know, especially I know some women right now and stuff don't wear dresses all their life, and they still got children. Come on out of here. They don't make no difference because nobody got on no dress. What is that? Verse 10, it says, and unto the married I command. Now, this is said, I command now, yet not I. But the Lord. So this is see. So that's just what I'm saying right here. In the book of Corinthians, in, in a lot of these books, God will allow these men to give great wisdom in this word. But that don't mean that God said it. Just like a, a lot of people have always have quoted for years and stuff about Job. Man is born of a woman. He is a full few days full of trouble. But Job was complaining. That don't mean God said that. That was Job's mess. He was in there whining and stuff and complaining. So God will allow these things to be printed in the word of God, that he was pouring out his mental anguish and his frustration of what he was going through. You see what the scripture said and stuff, said a man that fell off, lost all his weight and stuff, his, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, skin was falling off, off his, uh, 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 the skin was falling off his bones like scales that he could tip back and take a spoon and scrape the skin off of it. He was in a bad shape, and so he was in Sarah Valley. He was miserable, okay? And so we don't always quote everything that you have to be careful. You've got to know who's speaking in the Bible and the purpose of what they're saying and why they're saying it. So it says, and yet, and unto the merit I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Amen? But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. So, but to, and we're going to stop at verse 13, verse 12 said, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If thy brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Now watch this. Verse 13 says, And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So now what does that say? You know, I know a lot of times and stuff, when we're trying to make people up together, our children and our loved ones, we always run and get that scripture and snatch that scripture out. You know, you, you know you're know, you unequally yoked and stuff. Un unbelievers shouldn't be unequally yoked and all that kind of stuff like that. Well, I'm going to say this, we all have tripped up and made mistakes, you know. I'm going to just tell you just like it is. And so this man here is telling you in the Bible, God is, say if he is pleased. Sometimes, you know what, sometimes people take baby steps. Sometimes they may not get there when you get there. You don't throw your husband under the bus just because he don't know how to speak in tongues, he don't know how to dance, he don't know how to shout, he don't know how to praise God. You don't put your woman out, there, your wife, your woman out there and make her look bad because she's not up to par where you want her to be, okay? We can't demand things on individuals. So we, sometimes we have to be patient and we have to allow God to be able to work on individuals. And then you, the one that is stronger, you know, Galatians 6 and 1, brother, and if a man is over taken in a fault, that means woman too, or man too, if he, if he is overtaken in a fault, he which is spiritual, meaning the stronger one, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, lest I also be tempted. So that means the same thing that come upon you, which you point your finger at your own spouse about. Okay, so what's in it for you? So you're going to put him out just because he ain't doing what he's supposed to do or he went in there and, and, and made a mess and stuff or he didn't come in on time like he's supposed to and stuff like that. Well, the Bible said I can leave him and stuff if he out there cheating and stuff like that. But you know what? 
you may feel that you may have the authority to do that, but once you dump him and things like that, it may take God a long time and stuff to restore you with somebody else. Okay, that's really why you have so many females now. They are offering themselves off up and offering their bodies. We just got to read about that and things that in the earlier of this chapter and things about the husband body belong to the wife and the wife husband the wife body belong to the husband. But you got women out there advertising all on social media, all on the social media platforms, and so if. If, and that's because they're lonesome, that's because they're vulnerable, and that's because their passion is burning. That's the reason why they're doing that. So if you if you, you go out there and you get somebody else and stuff like that, now who to say who this person is going to be? You may have to wait for a long time. I mean, I, I know several individuals that have been divorced for years, and they are crying for God to give them spouses. But my thing about that is what you put the man out in the first place for. Okay, which put him away for the first time. That's because he made one more error or just because he didn't do something right or because he may came in and stuff and may have too much to drink or something like that. If you knew he had a drinking problem when you married him and things and you know he ain't delivered, you know that spirit is going to come back upon him, okay? Whatever that you took in when you married that individual, male or female, wife or husband, husband or wife, and if they are not delivered and you're not getting before God on their behalf, that spirit is not going nowhere and it's going to continue to And another thing, don't always be so quick to, to, to knock other women down just because your wife ain't where she's supposed to be. I, I, I cannot say that enough. I cannot say that enough. Don't ever get in the pulpit and strike another woman down because your wife is not where she's supposed to be, Okay. Do not get in there and cross-talk your husband in a conversation just because your husband is not up on the level where he's supposed to be at. Don't do that. You're supposed to respect one another. I had to learn that some years ago, too. See, that's the thing about us. That's why a lot of folks can't get delivered and saved and set free, because we won't be honest about our own flesh, our own mess that we used to, God had to deliver us out of. We want to hide it. I've been saved all day long and no evil have I done. We want to hide it. We want to cover it up. We don't want nobody to know that we done had no flaws, and we can't live like that before God and thank God going to let us in those gates like that. Yeah, I used to do it. I used to have a bad problem with doing it some years ago until God had to go in there and shake me one day. This man ain't even, this man of God ain't even talking to you. He's talking to your husband and stuff, and there you is right there in the middle of the conversation. And God had to work on me about that. And when God brings something to my attention, you best better believe I'm going to go back and lay it at God's feet because I want to be right, I want to be saved, and I got to be whole, okay? This ain't nothing about just, just um. Uh, uh, speaking this thing, baby, you got to walk this thing out. You got to really want God for yourself, okay? You got to really want to be saved. Being saved and things is just not with no suit and no dress on, okay? Being saved is just not just saying something with your mouth because the Bible said these people draw nigh to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Come on out of here. It's in the New Testament, and it's also in the Old Testament. So that don't mean anything about a person get up and stuff and talking with the microphone or they may be an usher and they, you know, that don't, that don't mean a hill of beans. God is not pleased with that. He's pleased about what, how we apply these scriptures and stuff. When people tell you that when the scripture says stop gossiping, are you going to do that? That when the scripture says stop being jealous of other people, and I'm going to say this too, sometimes a lot of things can come up on us in our own marriages because of how we don't put our mouths on other folk. Okay? So we respect one another. Just just hold. Sometimes it's best to hold your tongue even though you don't want to. We're going to stop right there at verse 13 because a lot of times we, so we, we don't know what God is making out in our relationship, okay? We, we don't know. We don't know how God is converted. Look how he went in there and told Hosea to go in there and marry that prostitute and stuff, Goma, and went in there and flipped the script on that woman. So we don't go in and we don't judge our spouses. Don't put them down. Don't pick up the phone and stuff just because they're not on the same level you are and you go in and call your pastor or another pastor or an archbishop and cut them down and empty all your business out to other folk and stuff. You get on your knees, man of God. Get on your knees, woman of God, and pray for your spouse. You got to pray for them. You don't get up there and put your mouth on your spouse like that, especially when you're going to go back home to them. What difference is that going to make? 
I'm on out of here. It don't make no difference. So I just wanted to say that the same thing for, for, for women and things like that. I'm not going to get into that about that women passing and stuff because I'm a pastor and I don't have to justify myself to nobody. Don't have to, okay? But for the women pastors, the same thing. You know, you don't lord over your husband just because you, God put you in authority and put you in control and stuff. You still are the wife, even though you're the pastor of the church, but you are still the wife and stuff at that church and even when you get to that house, okay? And if you see somebody in there and the man come in and he may be, have a little bit more gifts and talents than your husband, you don't cut him down just because your husband ain't where he's supposed to be. That's where you. That's where you're supposed to be going to work at right there. You're supposed to be praying for your household, asking God to help you. And even though if you don't see no results, keep going back again, over and over and over, like the woman did in the book of Luke, chapter 18. The woman kept going in there, worrying the unrighteous judge until the unrighteous judge delivered her of her adversary. Come on, her shake hey. You got to keep going back to the throne of God. It's persistence, patience, and then what? You're building a relationship with God too stronger and stronger. So I just wanted to say that. Don't 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 ever do that. We got too many leaders they'll do that. They'll sit there and they'll see other people come in there. They know their wives and where they're supposed to be. They sit there and let them live any kind of way. They let them come in there and bring all that world and just come on out of here from their jobs or back over there into their household and stuff. And they can't do nothing with it because now them spirits don't cook don't whoop them cat raggedy. And they can't do nothing with them. And so when other women come in through, through the door and stuff, and they are where they're supposed to be at in God and stuff, then you have some leaders, some pastors, some preachers, that's what they said, some elders, some evangelists and stuff, they'll get apostles, bishops, they'll get right up there, and they will cut the women down and put the women up under the wife. That's worldly, okay? Everything on a woman needs to be closed up. And if you don't want nobody thinking of nothing negative about your wife, make her put her some clothes on her back. Come on out of here. Make a clean up our act. Get before God. Sometimes you know. Sometimes you may have to have a discussion. Just like I, I love to, you know. I don't watch TV evangelists and stuff. You know, all day and every day. I don't do no stuff like that. I can go to God for myself. But one thing I love about Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, they do Bible study together and they do ministry together. If there's something wrong, he's going to get before God about his wife. And if there's something wrong with her husband, she's going to get before God about her husband. That's the way we're supposed to be, y'all. We're supposed to get before God. And even if the husband don't know how to pray, you get before God on his part, too. Sometimes you may have to carry the whole road, baby. Okay? So don't ever do that. Don't ever see because God is watching you. Don't ever put another woman up under your wife because she is slack in some areas because you're allowing her to be slack. You're allowing it. You're allowing the slackness. You're sitting there just sitting sniggling and get, get laughing and, get, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And then you hear other folks and stuff. When you go out to other ministries and other churches and stuff, they whisper. They whisper. They talking. They saying things. That man of God sit up and let his wife do this on Facebook. That man of God sit up and let his wife go out like that. This man of God sit up and so and so so and so and so. See, because the stuff be out there on you, and you be embarrassed, and you want to sit back and take the guilt trip, and you want to throw the guilt trip on somebody else because she ain't where she's supposed to be. Handle your business at the house. Don't put your mouth on nobody else. The one, the pastors, don't you put your mouth on nobody else's home and deal with your own. See, because all of us, baby, are, are, are subject to fall. At any time, if we don't watch ourselves and watch our mouth, our mouths are dangerous. So be careful. And we want to let folks just sit up and call my house whenever they get ready. Don't call my house for what? I ain't got time to sit up on the telephone and gossip with you. I ain't got, sit up and t- got time to sit up there and run nobody else down in their relationship and their marriage was going on somebody else's household, their church and stuff like that, their church about the clothes and stuff. Don't call me telling me no stuff like that, stuff like that that bothers me because I don't want to see no man of God fall or no woman of God fall. So don't call my house with no mess like that, okay, because I'm going to tell God on you now. And that's me. I won't get all this stuff. On that, I don't sit up there. I got two cell phones and stuff. My phones don't don't ring and stuff. Rarely, probably once every two weeks. My telephone probably ring about once a week because I don't care on a whole lot of mess. 
because I made a vow to God, and I asked God 20 years ago when he came and saved me and called me into ministry, I said, God, I do not want to be bothered with these folks' problems and stuff while they're sitting up here calling and they ain't telling the whole story because usually when you're trying to listen to somebody's problem, you seldom get the whole story, Okay. You seldom get the whole story. Now, if you come to me and you come to me right and you come to me clean, like somebody called here and this woman, she was honest and stuff, didn't know who she was. She just called the church prayer line and stuff. And when she called the church prayer line, she said, Pastor, she said that I'm not going to give my name, which I don't ask nobody for their names and stuff. I don't need to know your business and stuff like that. She said, I'm married, and I still slipped off on my husband and stuff. She said, but now I'm trying to end this relationship affair that I've been having with this man and stuff, and I don't know how to do it. He keep following me around. He still keep calling me, and I can't shake him. I want to know if you would go before God. And this was a, a Hispanic lady. She was Hispanic. She wasn't for no, no African American seeker. We don't discriminate in our ministry. Whosoever will, let him come. Come on here. And that's what she had prayed. Do you think I sit up and laughed at the woman? See, people sit back and laugh and stuff like that because they're immature in ministry. They're immature. They're still on milk. Got milk on their breath. I didn't. I didn't pray for her right then on the phone and stuff. I told her, I said, I will certainly be in prayer for you, woman of God. Hispanic lady. Well, I ain't going to say she was a woman of God. I don't know who she was, but she was in prayer, wanted someone to agree with her that she would get away from that man, that, and she admitted that she caused the problem. See what I'm saying? You've got to come with the whole story. The woman came. She was honest. She said she called the problem. She said the husband don't know nothing about it, but the husband, went, uh, uh, but, but the man keep following her around, and she said she's trying to get, get, get rid of him. She don't want to be bothered with him no more. That's what I'm talking about, bringing the whole story to the plate, bringing the whole role. Don't bring half of it, and you know you've done, done it, went, was out there, and you ain't telling your part, okay? So that's all I have for you today for part one, what's in it for you. Next week we're going to be in the book of um, 1 Corinthians again, chapter 7. We're going to start off with the 14th verse. Thank you so much for tuning in with us on uh, today, and um, I pray that you have a blessed day and pray that the blessings of the Lord be upon you again. This is Pastor Diane Winbush, and you be blessed. <laughs>